Hello and welcome to this short video on mobile access to Enterprise Vault archives using IMAP. My name is Phil Walters and I'm a consultant working for a company called Adeptech. So before we get into the technical details, let's consider why mobile access to EV archived items is required. One of the primary reasons is that mobiles and tablets are becoming the primary email client for many users. And aggressive archiving port policies caused by quota-based archiving mean that younger and younger items are being archived in the user's email. So when they use their mobile client, they need to be able to have access to their archived emails as well as their live emails. Also, users need access to their emails whilst traveling. And finally, support for bring your own device users. As users bring their own devices to work, it tends to be a mobile or tablet that they want to bring. So we need to have a solution that provides them with mobile access to the EV archived items. So one of the ways to do it is to use IMAP. Using IMAP, you connect your archive as if it was a mailbox. This is supported by all IMAP clients, which includes a wide range of mobile clients. With this you can access, view and forward or apply to any archive message. And you can also browse through your archive folders, so it's very flexible. If we look at the architecture of IMAP access, our mobile client with an IMAP profile configured will use the IMAP protocol over TCP port 993. That's the SSL port for IMAP. And it will connect to an IMAP enabled EV server. In order to apply or forward to existing archived emails, the user needs SMTP access over TCP port 25 or 587 to an Exchange Hub server where the emails can be relayed. Now, providing this access internally is pretty straightforward but providing it externally requires extra levels of security. For instance, you would want to publish the IMAP enabled EV server using a reverse proxy server. And you need to be very careful about publishing the Exchange Hub server to allow relay from the outside world. Let's now look in brief at how to configure IMAP access. You'll see this in more detail if you view the demo which goes along with this video. First of all, you'll want to obtain SSL certificate from a public certificate authority. IMAP is an inherently insecure protocol, so it's very important to implement SSL. Next, you'll want to edit the notification message. As with standard email archiving, you want to tell the user that they've been enabled for IMAP. So this notification message will give them all the information they need. Then you need to define the IMAP and SMTP endpoints. Also grant send as permissions. This needs to be provided for the Vault service account to send emails as the reply address on the notification message. You need to assign IMAP endpoints to EV servers. And then define IMAP policies. The policy defines which endpoint, so IMAP and SMTP endpoints, are assigned. We actually assign those to individual users using the IMAP provisioning groups. The concept of an IMAP provisioning group is very similar to a provisioning group for Exchange Mailbox archiving. We can assign this to users and groups and LDAP profiles. Next, check the IMAP folder limit. By default, in the site settings, it sets a limit of 10,000 items per folder. If you increase this, it can um, have a, a profound effect on the performance of your EV server. Finally, you run the client access provisioning task. This actually provisions your users for IMAP access. Once they are provisioned, they'll be sent a welcome message which looks a bit like this. The key thing that they need is their username. The username for IMAP access and EV is of the format domain backslash username backslash unique number. 
Obviously they wouldn't know this number unless they had the notification message. Another requirement for IMAP access is that fast browsing is, is enabled. This was something which was, which was introduced in EV11 and specifically was introduced to support IMAP. Some indexing attributes are placed in the vault store to speed up browsing. Archives created in EV11 will always have fast browsing enabled, but archives created in previous versions will require it to be enabled. So when you enable a user for IMAP, if they don't have fast browsing enabled, a request will be made to the index administration task, which handle the process of actually enabling fast browsing on the archive. Until fast browsing has been enabled, the user won't be able to use IMAP. There are a number of performance considerations for IMAP access. First of all, the maximum number of clients supported per EV storage server. You'll notice that now we can support up to 4,000 mobile devices per EV server. It's not recommended to add too many new clients per day. So the recommended maximum for mobile devices is 1,000. It's an important note at the bottom there. These figures are for Enterprise Vault 1101, cumulative hotfix one and above. Veritas in introduced a number of uh, performance improvements in that cumulative hotfix. So if you're going to implement IMAP, you're strongly recommended to at least use that cumulative hotfix or above. There are a number of security considerations for IMAP access. The first one we've already mentioned, which is that IMAP is an inherently insecure protocol, so SSL is required. The second point is very important to understand. Access to externally published EV servers cannot be controlled. So once a user has been configured for IMAP access, if they have access to this on the internet, they can actually configure an IMAP profile on any client. So maybe on their home uh, tablet, on their personal mobile, and you cannot control that. One way of getting over that um, limitation is to only make external IMAP access available via the VPN client. By making it available via VPN, it's effectively still internal access. So the user from their personal mobile or tablet wouldn't be able to configure a profile. Finally, it's very important to take care when publishing Exchange Hub servers externally for SMTP Relay that you don't inadvertently allow um, unauthenticated users to relay through your Exchange Hub servers. So that brings us to the end of this short video about IMAP access for mobile clients. If you want to find out more, I strongly recommend that you check out the separate demonstration video that shows you how to set this up and configure it. So thank you very much for listening.